Well, this has turned into quite the fiasco. Trying to figure out with my original thermocouple, which was stuck at around 17 or 19 degrees and wouldn't go anywhere, and still getting inconsistent results, including not being confident about this meter, not being sure if I have a probe problem still. I ended up taking the meter apart because when I was looking into the K connector interface, it looked like the contacts were really loose if I shake it around especially. They just go all over the place and it didn't feel like a tight enough fit so that it wasn't making contact it seemed like. And this is the other side of the connector where the tabs help make contact with the probe. Here they are bowed out to help push down and make contact when the probe slides in. But those were very, very flat. One was a little curved, looking intentionally so to make contact. The other was really flat. So I just pulled these out and bent them more exaggerated. And I'm going to put it back together and it should have enough tension on there. Otherwise, everything in here looked straightforward. It's a simple interface with a blob integrated circuit. And this tiny device, I'm not sure what that is. I couldn't easily find a data sheet when I looked for one. I don't know if it's some part of the circuitry or if it's maybe part of measuring the temperature inside the unit, but it doesn't really matter right now. I just need to put this all back together because I was really only trying to fix the mechanical connector. I also noticed on the LCD, it has this rubberized interface. And the PCB looks like an old Atari game with all these edge connector tabs. So this mounts right on the strip. And I had never seen that before, so I looked it up. The rubber interface on the LCD between the screen and the board is an elastomeric connector which goes by a trademark name Zebra Connector, which I guess it looks like a zebra here going conductive insulating, conductive insulating. And because they are flexible, they're good for shock and vibration absorbing, I guess. And if they're in harsh environments, I don't know if that means like if there's moisture or salt in the air kind of thing, this kind of also does a gasket seal for the electrical contacts between the board and the LCD. So they can be used in low-cost regular products like calculators or anything where you need high reliability like a flight data recorder, it says. And this sample image here looks exactly like my situation. I've got this board with edge connectors and this zebra connector and then an LCD would push down on top and the connection would be made from bottom to top. So I'm going to put all this back together and see if it still works and works more reliably. So I've reassembled the K connector and I've attached the board back and it's making contact with the zebra strip. So with the battery in, it seems like it's still running. So I'll continue reassembling it. So trying to get everything set up again for another test, I have ice water in this tankard, a fallen thermometer as a control, 21.5 degrees Celsius, the newly put together low cost temperature meter, and the X-Tech meter with its K-type interface adapter. One possible thought about a source of errors would be if this thing is adding extra resistance or I don't know if it's going to contribute any offset temperature readings and stray voltages because of different metals all over the place. But it is an interface for this purpose. So in resistance mode, if I just take a 22 gauge solid wire through here, it's showing me 0 0.2 ohms, including the wire loop. I'll have to assume this is okay and I still have the K-type interface that came with the meter, so I could compare both of those if I want. Now, the K-probe itself might be off by two degrees. I don't know the accuracy on this. Let's just say there's another degree at least. So I could be off by three degrees. And as I was testing in the past with this against my house thermostat, this lines up with what the thermostat says when I put it near. So I still will trust this 
and I'll trust that this is a couple of degrees above zero. If it was any colder, it would probably be solid ice, but it's water. So the thermocouple that was stuck at 17 or 19 degrees, ignoring the reason it's stuck, it's pretty much got a problem. I can't cool it or heat it and change the reading. So this is the original low-cost K-type probe that came with the low-cost meter. And I found this when I was in a surplus store this past week. It was $7, new in the package. New old stock, I guess. And so I do now have two relatively low cost, whether they're low quality, who knows, thermocouples. So the K probe that came with the meter stabilized just around the 20 point something degrees, very close to the 20.4 on the actual thermometer I count on. Now it'll change a bit, especially as I come near it with creating body heat, it might go up a bit, but it's leveling off. It's going up and down by point couple of degrees. So if I bring this over and that falls again to the DMM with the K-type probe, well it's only showing 15 or 16 degrees. If anything, it should have warmed up from me handling it. So this is where I get my mystery from because I don't know that this interface should be causing such a problem. So if I switch to the interface that came with it, it's the same 16 degrees, which is weird. The room is, according to this, 20.4 still. I put it back on this meter. Oh my god. Urgh. And oddly, it started like 18 something degrees, but it is climbing up. So I don't know how that happened suddenly. This is part of the mysteries I'm stuck with. I have so many variables. It depends what sequence I do things in, apparently. So for some reason now it's 19.5 instead of, well, it was 20 point, same as this, 20.4. So it's still within a couple of degrees of its allowed error. But what happens if I turn this off and on? So it's retained its reading. What if I unplug it and replug it? Is there still something weird? I haven't had any stability issues like before. If I move this, this would jump five degrees. So I fixed that. Oh dear. Okay, so we plug this back in. Now it's dropping. <laughs> so it's going back around its 19.5, I guess. Okay, so what if I go back over here? Keep the probe in the same location. And we're starting at the same 15 degrees, 16 degrees. Let's see if that climbs and tries to do 19. 17, 16, 17. So either way, I shouldn't need to wait this long for this to stabilize as a meter. So 17 degrees, 20 degrees, I don't know what that is, 17 point what. So again, we're within plus or minus three degrees of what we're gonna call a room temperature guarantee. So what about the other probe I recently bought for $7? How does this one look? Yeah, I gotta do something about that. I held the end so it went up toward 30 degrees. I'll let it climb down until it stabilizes. Meanwhile, this one went to 9 degrees because it's touching the cold water reservoir. So this green wire probe that I just bought, that's coming around and stabilizing somewhere around this 20.4. Even if it is going to fluctuate around while it's sitting next to a cold probe, I don't know how sensitive it is, but it would have ramped down a lot quicker if it was trying to tell me it's really that much colder, right? This one got back up to 16 or so that it just wants to measure room temperature as being. 16, 17. So both of these probes can get around the 20.4 target on here. So if I swap again, oh dear. Magnifier, multi-purpose tool. So I'm back to the original K probe that came with the thermometer, and it is the one that was down to nine degrees touching this cold water. So it's climbing back up slowly. Now this one is showing 18, so it's within plus or minus three degrees from this target. 
and this one seems to want to stabilize around 19.5 to 19. I believe that's what I saw when I flipped it over to here and then flipped it back. So it's being consistent on here relatively, and it's all within. Well, now this one went to 19. Maybe this is just a bizarre circuit and needs a lot more time to adjust. I don't know. So what happens with cold water? Thermal shock. I still have some ice cubes. So it's not solid ice. It should be a couple of degrees Celsius. Both probes at the same time. I'm trying to make sure they're touching only water and not actual ice, and that they are close together and not touching each other, just so they're getting nearby independent readings. Yeah, they're both stabilizing around 2 degrees, slightly above freezing. So, let's just say I've had a multitude of problems. This no longer jumps around when I move it, so I fixed that by fixing those contacts. And I think one problem I was having with this meter before was when I was trying to put these probes in a cold environment, instead of using cold water, I was trying to put this in the freezer, but I put the entire probe in. And then I was only able to measure down to 6 or 7 degrees when it was supposed to be minus a couple of degrees Celsius according to this. And I think it's because the meter has to calibrate against its environment ambient temperature, and then I gave this extra cold minus something degree Celsius probe, so I'm not sure if thermally this warmer environment suddenly got this probe that was a couple of degrees and everything was off calibration from its own internal temperature calibration, and now it's trying to measure the thermal difference between its own internal room temperature measurement and the tip of the probe that's being measured, it's seeing a thermal offset right here because I gave it a probe that was probably a couple of degrees below zero. So I will assume human error caused my original problems with trying to use this meter, and I did have a legitimate mechanical contact problem with this meter. Now everything is sort of behaving together, so let's just say it looks like I can use the thermal couples and I can use this low cost couple of dollar meter. So now that I've got this thermal couple working, what I wanted to do originally when I bought this hot air rework station is just check how hot is the hot air that's blowing out of this. So it's reached 235 or so. See what I can get showing up. Well, it's showing over 300, and that's away from the nozzle. I assume this temperature is supposed to be either really close to the output or even somewhere deeper in. I would have expected a cooler than 235. Let's try 170 or so. Maybe the accuracy on this is way off, or maybe this probe is way off at higher temperatures. Who knows? That's just part of the experiment. This stuff was good at 0 degrees Celsius and room temperature. So we're at 170 or so. And I've got like 250 showing up. Well, it depends where I put it, but I, I don't know why I'm seeing 250. If I move a bit away, like an inch, it's still getting 200 degrees. So I'm not sure. Maybe this thing is actually putting out way more than it says. That's the whole thing. Where's the real problem here? Or is there a problem? In the end, it doesn't matter really too much because I'm not counting on this for an exact temperature for soldering. I'm just looking to turn it on and get used to, over time, whether I'm desoldering or soldering, I just turn it up gradually until either the solder paste that I'm trying to solder with starts to melt and reflow, or if it's not hot enough to take something off a board, I start increasing it and hope it works e eventually. The minimum is about 117. I'm still seeing 200. 150 to 200. Well, this isn't the most scientific approach anyway. This is not a controlled environment, but the point was just to see what I can see with this. So now I really would have a new mystery. Is this accurate? Is this accurate at that temperature range? For my purposes, 
I'm good. Well, let me try going to just around 200 degrees. And this time, instead of the airflow, I'm just going to touch the probe right on the metal. So as we're getting up toward 200, what do we get right on the device? I'm getting around 80 degrees back here, halfway down the nozzle, up near the tip. It looks like it's climbing. I'll just let it keep going. It's stabilizing close to 150 when it's set for 200. Maybe this is what I should have been doing. This kind of makes more sense. Uh, as, as I get closer to the actual end of the tip of the nozzle, it's a little higher, more like 160. So I don't know, if I measure the airflow again, it goes way up. 260 instead of 205 that I'm set at. Part of the problem is I don't know the proper ways to go about characterizing this kind of free air temperature. If I had a temperature chamber maybe and I could set it for a guaranteed 100 degrees and then check it that way I'd, I'd be doing better. This was just for fun. So in the end at least I got this thing eventually running and grounded safely with the fuse on the hot and I got this working reasonably well at normal low room temperatures down towards zero at least. Still not sure about how it works at high temperatures, but I don't really have a controlled environment to characterize that, so we'll call it a day on thermocouple woes.